Hey YouTube, thought I'd give, uh, this is in no way a tutorial, but a little bit of uh, information about if ever uh, anybody out there is, uh, in, is, is thinking about changing a transmission in a Chevy Volt. This is a 2012 Chevrolet Volt. I uh, had an issue with the transmission uh, slipping. Uh, it just happened all of a sudden and uh, brought it into the GM dealership. They wanted me... They told me uh, it was the TCM needed to be replaced. TCM is uh, what we see here in the pan there. Uh, so I then uh, bought a new one, tried a few other things before I checked the valve body, uh, removed all the valves one by one, checked them one by one, made sure nothing was looking weird in there, no scratches, nothing, everything looked new. Then I decided to change the TCM like, like GM suggested they were gonna do, they wanted 2500 bucks to do the job so I bought it for six seven hundred bucks and uh, put it in got it programmed another 200 bucks by GM and uh, and I got the exact same thing that happened so of course they didn't want to take responsibility for that so uh, I decided well you know instead of spending more money just found a used transmission so I found this particular one I'm looking at right here uh, for 200 bucks had uh, broken pan in the front uh the wires had been pinched while they removed the transmissions it didn't have a torque dampener so i had to transfer mine over um so what was required to change the wiring over i had to split the case that's why you see the gaskets sitting on the case there uh to get to the wiring on the inside it's actually pretty straightforward once you got the case apart uh, it's really easy you just take the uh three bolts out of here out of these three wires and the three on the inside and uh and uh, that's how you swap that out but uh unfortunately requires uh splitting the case and uh and then uh, having to change those uh seals on both sides so that's take this one right here had to be changed and this one right here had to be changed and by the way also hu huge hugely important on uh, on electric cars is they can actually kill you these the batteries that are in the car carry 300 volts so if anybody's thinking about trying something like this you better do your homework and figure out how to deactivate the electrical system uh, before you even think about touching uh, the electrical system in this car because it can kill you now uh, just to give you an idea of what kind of job this is you have to remove basically everything under the car uh, to get that transmission to lower um, So that means the subframe which is sitting over here including the rack and pinion sway bar Everything uh, that you see attached to it comes with it. You have no choice to take it down with it uh, of course axles uh, catalytic converter uh, wheel wells uh, brakes uh, spindles bearings I had these, I uh, actually should have taken these spindles out with the axle. One ended up being severely seized on the bearing and uh, ended up uh, damaging it, uh, trying to remove it. I ended up getting it off on the, with about 20 tons of, of pressure on the press, but uh, I mushroomed the, uh, the axle. So I'm having to change that axle now and also I'm changing the bearing uh, out with, with the spindle from a, from a used car anyway. That's uh, the kind of shit you can expect, uh, I guess, sometimes on an older car. This car is only eight years old. It's got a, uh, it's got 140,000 kilometers on it. Um, so I wouldn't really have expected uh, an axle to be seized that that bad on on a car this young, you know. Anyway, so as you can see, um, I was able to basically remove the subframe without without opening any of the coolant systems. In the procedure, in the manual, I do have the GM factory manual that I'm uh, following as I'm doing this. It does tell you to remove the inverter, which is up here from the car. I actually was able to just uh, kind of unbolt it and toss it to the side. That gave me enough room to uh, to remove uh, the bolts on, a, on the engine mount. Now, I also got Sorry, I got the car up on the lift here. I don't want to lower it for now. I also made up a kind of like a 
uh, an angle iron uh, sitting on a wood block here. That's uh, temporarily supporting the engine because once you remove the two transmission mounts, uh, you got basically only one mount holding the engine. So I just put a piece of angle iron, as you can see. I don't know if you can see that all the way in the back there. I uh, supported it uh, just on the, uh, on the, there's like a structure piece after the hood there and then and over here at the front uh, it's pretty solid too so it does not a huge amount of weight because you're only holding one side of the engine but uh, it definitely needs to be supported otherwise uh, it'll fall down and hit something for sure anyway so that's uh i guess sums it up um uh it's a pretty big job so i thought i'd uh i'd uh, show a little bit on how i did it uh, so if anybody runs into the same problem having to change the Chevy Volt transmission, you can get some info out of this. It's not a small job, not for everyone. Obviously, I have a lift here uh, that tremendously helps doing a job like this because you're continuously going up and down, up and down, uh, uh, figuring out what you have to take off to get this thing out. So... Uh, so hopefully this helps someone out out there. If you're thinking of doing this job, uh, I might do a post video of uh, the results uh, after replacing the transmission. Uh, if I do, well, we'll see you then. Thanks uh, for watching.